Let's talk about the decision tree analysis in R. Decision tree is a very useful model. It can help us to predict what's going to happen in the future. We have a lot of business applications of decision tree. For example, we would like to know if a customer would default on a mortgage. Should we issue a new credit card to an applicant? All of these questions can be answered by decision tree. On this screen, you can see an example of decision tree. It looks like uh, an upside down tree, right? That's why we call this chart a decision tree because it looks like an upside down tree. We want to build this model to predict the probability for a customer to be a paid user or not in a fitness mobile app. In order to answer this question, I collected a sample of 100 customers' responses to my questions. My hypothesis is the customer's income, gym visit frequency, state, in which state the customers resigned, hours, how long the customer will use the mobile app, can influence his or her decision to pay for additional services in the mobile app. I'm not sure how incomes, gym visits, state, and hours influence pay or not decision. That's why I want to use decision tree to give me the probability that the customer would like to pay or would not pay for the additional service. By the way, there is a very interesting study I found. It says many CEOs of Fortune 500 companies have six-pack apps. I guess money can not only buy happiness, but also can buy health. I'm not sure if incomes, higher incomes will influence the paid decision. That's why I want to use decision tree to analyze the influence of incomes on pay or not decision. In this example, in pay or not column, I only have uh, two possibilities two possible results. Yes, I would like to pay for the additional service or no, I won't pay for the mobile app. In the next video, I'm going to show you what if we have uh, three or more possibilities for the target variable. So in this case, we only use two, two possibilities. But the uh, decision tree is very powerful. No matter how many possibilities, how many possible results you have, decision tree can help you to predict the probability for each possibility. This is fantastic. By the way, I listed this data set and R script in this video's comment section. You can download them onto your computer I also listed a video that predicts three or more possible results in the comment section. If your data sets need you to predict more than two possible results, you can use that video as a tutorial. This is the R code for performing decision tree. After you download this R script onto your computer, basically you can copy the whole script and paste it into your R software. But here I want to briefly explain the purpose of each line. In this case, I'm going to use two packages to draw a decision tree. One is called the R part, another one is called the R part plot. R part is to perform decision tree analysis, and R part plot, of course, is to draw the decision tree in a chart. There are some other packages available in the R community. Uh, if you are familiar to those packages, feel free to use them. I want to focus on how to interpret the decision tree result, not which package you should use for drawing a decision tree. So in this case, I'm going to use these two packages. If you haven't installed them in your R software, make sure you install these two packages first. 
Once you installed, you don't have to install again next time when you use R part and R part plot packages. But uh, you do need to use library function to initiate R part and uh, R part plot before every time you want to use these two packages. R part makes decision tree analysis very simple and easy. First, I want to import the data source data into my R software to create a data frame. I want to use read.table to create this data frame. And then I want to use R part to build a decision tree model. As you can see here, I want to use incomes, gym visits, and the state as independent variable to predict the probability for a paid decision or not. And then I want to give this data frame as the value to the data parameter, as you can see here. Uh, basically, uh, after you run this line, this one, our part already built the result and give the result to a variable called the tree analysis. If you want to see what the result looks like, you can. You can simply type tree analysis and then press enter on your keyboard. You should be able to find the results. But the uh, uh, decision tree analysis results are too complicated to see. That's why we want to visualize the decision tree analysis result. The function for visualizing the decision tree result is rpart.plot. You basically give tree analysis as a parameter to rpart.plot function. And then you should be able to see a tree chart like this. This is the final result. As you can see, I already executed the code on the left side. After you execute this code, you should be able to see a tree on the right part. By the way, if you maximize the, the script window, after you press enter, you probably won't see the tree chart, right? Simply restore the size of the window, you should be able to see the tree chart in the behind. Now let's talk about how to interpret this tree chart. This is the most important part in decision tree analysis. Once you get to the decision tree analysis chart, the first thing you want to look at is the yes and the no. These two little boxes next to incomes less than 95. What these two boxes indicate is where should we classify a customer if his answer to each of our research question is yes. Let me give you an example. So the first decision question we want to ask is, are you making less than 95K a year? The customer said, yes, I make less than 95K a year. Then according to this little yes box, we should classify this customer who make less than 95K a year into the light blue bubble on the left side of this decision tree. Then we ask the same question to the second customer. The customer said, no, I make more than 95K a year. Then according to this little no box, he should be classified into some of the bubble on the right side of the tree. We don't know which bubble he should be classified into. That's why we ask the second question. Are you from New York State or not? He said, yes, I'm from New York State. Then according to this yes indicator, the customer who make more than 95K a year and is from New York State should be classified into this darker blue bubble. This is how you use the yes and the no to classify which bubble the customer belongs to. Very important. Let's try one more time. Let's say we have a customer who makes more than 95K a year. According to this no box, he should be classified in some bubbles on the right side of the decision tree, right? 
So we classified him into the right side. And then he said, uh, no, I'm from Texas. Since his answer to the second research question is a no, according to the no indicator, he should be classified into the darker green bubble on the very right end of this decision tree. So simply put, if a customer's answer to your decision question is a yes, he should be classified into the left side of your decision question. If a customer's answer to your decision question is a no, he should be classified into the right side of your decision question. Got it? All clear? If you have a question, make a comment down below. I will check the comment section so I can answer your particular question. But the, the first thing you want to look at is this yes and no little boxes. They indicate where should we classify each customer if his answer to our research question is a yes or a no. Then we have a lot of colorful bubbles inside of the tree. We call each bubble a nod, N-O-D-E. Each nod contains three pieces of information. First, the predicted result. Second, the probability for a customer to be a paid user. Third, the proportion of data points in each bubble over the entire data set. Let me use an example to show you. So we ask a customer, are you making less than 95K a year? He said yes. Then we should classify this customer into this light blue bubble on the left side of the tree, right? As I said, the first piece of information the blue bubble represents is the predicted result. This result is the ultimate result you are interested. Whether a customer will be a paid customer or he will continue to be a free customer. So according to this blue light blue bubble on the left side, the predicted result is if a customer makes less than 95K a year, he will not pay for the mobile app. The second information is the probability for a customer to be a paid customer. This probability is very low. It's only 0.13 as you can see in the middle of this light blue bubble. 0 0.13 and no can't explain each other, right? I said uh, the predicted result for this customer to be paid is no. Why he said no? Because the probability for him to be paid customer is too low. It's only 13%. That's why no and the 0 0.13 in this light blue bubble can't explain each other. The third information is the proportion of data points in this bubble over the entire data set. The value is 71%. This means that the number of data points in this light blue bubble takes 71% of all records in this data set, meaning that 71% of customers will be classified into this light blue bubble on the left side of the decision tree. So what kind of a decision we can make? We can see something like uh, in the future, if we have a new customer that makes less than 95K a year, he is not likely to be a paid customer because according to our current analysis, if a customer makes less than 95K a year, the probability for this customer to be a paid customer is very low. It's just about 13%. How about let's do another exercise. How should we interpret the values in the dark green bubble on the very right end of the tree? We got yes. That means if a customer is classified into the dark green bubble, he is very likely to be a paid customer. How likely? 
we got 0 0.90, 90%, 90% likely. And then we have a 20%. This 20% shows the proportion of data points in this dark green bubble over the entire sample size. So 20% of the entire customer sample will be classified into this dark green bubble. What kind of a conclusion can we make? In order to answer this question, we have to see how a customer can be classified into this dark green bubble. The customer must say no to both of your decision questions, right? From the top to here, the customer must say no, I make more than 95K a year. He must say no to, the, to your second decision question, no, I'm not from New York State. That's how he can be classified into this dark green bubble on the right end, right? This is how you interpret the decision tree model. The last thing I want you to pay attention to is the bubble on the very top of the tree chart. It's called a root, R-O-O-T. The root bubble does not predict anything. It simply describes the fact of the data set we use to build this decision tree model. So in our case, we collected responses from 100 customers, but only 28 of them are currently paid customers. That's why we have 0 0.28 in the middle. Because the uh, number of paid users is very low, the root bubble will make a conclusion that the most of the customers are non-paid customer. They are free customers. This is how you interpret a tree chart.